Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Julia Tolovsky. I'm curator for Russian and Soviet nonconformist art here at the Zimmerle Art Museum. And it is my pleasure and honor to welcome you today to this uh, concert devoted to Ukrainian avant-garde music. And today we are in the midst of the um, most unthinkable situation uh, when um, Russian military forces attacking Ukraine. And um, this situation doesn't make any sense to me or, or to any of my Russian friends. And I uh, have to say that I have never been so appalled, ashamed, and helpless. Uh, and uh, we can, we should only, we can only do what we can. Uh, and uh, today's concert is um, actually an opportunity to promote and support Ukrainian culture. Uh, the Zimmerle Art Museum is conducting an initiative when we will post every day a work by a Ukrainian artist on our social media. And we started this initiative yesterday with the work by uh, Ala Horska and uh, this powerful work uh, painted in colors of Ukrainian flag uh, portrays a woman who is silenced by uh, the totalitarian regime. And today, um, we will have a concert of uh, Ukrainian music called Music in Excess, which is organized in conjunction with the exhibition uh, Painting in Excess, Kiev's Art Revival 1985-1993, that was curated by Olena Martinuk. Um, and uh, this is already second exhibition on Ukrainian nonconformist art that uh, we organized in collaboration with Olena Martinuk, and the first uh, one was exhibition called Odessa Second Avant-Garde City and the Myth, and this is the brochure for the exhibition. And Olena was our uh, Deutsch fellow, graduate fellow here at Rutgers University, and uh, after she defended, she went to um, work in the, the Harriman Institute at Columbia University as a postdoctoral fellow. And uh, also uh, we were fortunate uh, to collaborate uh, with her on this current exhibition. Uh, and Elena will give a tour of this exhibition after the concert. Uh, this exhibition uh, and concert uh, are supported by the Avenir, Endow Avenir Endowment Fund as well as by Ukrainian Institute and uh, Abramovich and Timofey Foundations. And now I will give the floor to Olena, who will introduce uh, the musicians and uh, the concert. Please, welcome. Uh, thank you, Julia. And, uh uh, for this introduction, uh, I wanted to correct a little bit. I'm not going to introduce musicians because we have a musicologist here to do that. Um, but uh, I'm going to speak a little bit uh, to introduce the show. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm welcoming all, you, all of you today. Uh, thank you for coming here. And I also welcome our virtual guests. Hello. Um, I just uh, wanted to say very briefly that until uh, basically three days ago, my primary concern about this event was that, well, due to the COVID, we couldn't have as lavish a celebration for this exhibition as uh, it should have. Uh, and um, But uh, uh, since this unthinkable war started, and uh, Russia in invaded Ukraine, um, I really um, started to reevaluate uh, all these concerns and uh, ask myself what, uh, um, what I, as an art historian working in the US, uh, can help to, uh, to contribute, um, like alleviating this uh, horrible situation. And I felt completely helpless for several days, but Right now, I feel like uh, uh, me uh, being uh, present here, talking in front of you, and also you being here um, uh, at the event, celebrating U Ukrainian culture, uh, really, really counts. 
And uh, the exhibition is de dedicated to Perestroika, a very transitional uh, moment in Ukrainian history when the Soviet Union was about to collapse and uh, uh, artists uh, reflected this exhilarating um, and fascinating time, but uh, it was also a very uncertain time. And uh, I really hope we can uh, draw some inspiration from that period. I also wanted to say that it's a big honor for me to stand in front of this piece by Ukrainian a group called Natspro. Uh, um, it's, it was comprised by Oleg Tistol and Mykola Matsenko. And um, during Perestroika, they were uh, studying uh, this very difficult moment in Ukrainian history, like the civil war, which um, happened after the Bolshevik Revolution in 1918. And you know, they have chosen to concentrate on a moment of unity, uh, of unity between Poland and Ukraine, and this particular a painting, which is dedicated to Pilsudski. Even though this union was very short-lived, uh, didn't work out, but I think the effort and the message really counts uh, when people are gathering and uh, they are uh, ready to fight injustice and they are ready to stand together. And uh, I think uh, us uh, being here today also contributes. Um, I wanted to um, uh, introduce uh, Leah Bastone, uh, who is a, a musicologist uh, from uh, uh, currently uh, Vienna University. Uh, without her, this concert would really be um, impossible because uh, uh, she is a specialist and uh, she has helped to select uh, these particular artworks uh, which um, reflect this moment uh, of uh, uh, perestroika when um, uh, our ideas of uh, postmodernism uh, were entering uh, the Ukrainian culture uh, for the first time. And uh, before I give the floor to Lee uh, with uh, immense gratitude, uh, I wanted to also uh, thank bri briefly uh, Norton and Nancy Dodge for their collection. And uh, I wanted to thank um, at the Ukrainian Institute uh, uh, of Kyiv, uh, who, which supported uh, the publication of the catalog. I also wanted to thank um, Igor Abramovich and um, his uh, Abramovich Foundation for uh, their help of um, bringing some artworks from Ukraine. Uh, also, Timofeev Foundation, who contributed to this. And uh, last but not the least, I wanted to thank you all uh, who uh, support Ukrainian culture and Ukraine. Uh, and uh, our presence here, uh, just a, a testimony that Ukraine uh, exists and it, its culture matters. Thank you all. Uh, thank you, Olena. I'm Leah Badstone, as Olena mentioned. I'm a musicologist and a postdoctoral fellow at the University of Vienna currently. Um, so I just wanted to say a few words about these pieces, why we picked them, how we think that they interact with the works that are in this exhibition, and also to introduce the musicians. Um, so I was really excited that Olena wanted to have a musical element as part of the reception for this exhibi exhibit and to look in music for sort of the similar themes that the exhibit explores in terms of diversity of styles, this kind of excess that, that the exhibit focuses on, um, the response to perestroika, the response to the collapsing Soviet empire and those kinds of things. So we picked four works from composers of different generations but all of whom were composing in the late 80s and early 90s. Um, and today we're going to start actually the program with the youngest composer. And this is different from the program that was printed. I apologize, we, we had a change in the program order. So we're gonna start with uh, Nebezny, Ivan Nebezny. This is the youngest composer on our, on our program. Um, so he studied in Lviv with Miroslav Skorik, which if anybody knows anything about Ukrainian music knows he's a very important figure in Ukrainian music, passed away last year. Um, Today, uh, Nebezny is the founder and artistic director of the Contemporary Music Ensemble Cluster. Um, from 2006 to 2011, he served as the head of Kiev Music Fest, which is an international contemporary music festival held in Kiev every year. 
This particular work is a very early work of his. I think it may be one of the earliest that he sort of advertises. Um, it was composed for a competition called the Youth Music Program, um, and it was premiered in 1993 by the Dato Ensemble. And he told me that for him, it represents a search of a young person living through Perestroika for where they fit into the musical landscape. So here's this moment when a large amount of new information opens up and suddenly there's all of this diversity and it was sort of a representation of his, his journey to find sort of a voice for himself within that context. Um, so that is partly reflected in the instrumentation which is very traditional in that it's a string quartet but also has the addition of recorded tape. So he's sort of bringing in these different elements, modern and traditional. Um, the next piece is by Yuri Lanyuk, who's actually, um, we're sort of stepping back in time quite a bit. Um, he trained as a cellist in Lviv, first of all, and then did his composition degree in Kyiv. And this work is his anticipation sonata. Um, so the it's for piano and cello. The piano is prepared, which means that things have been done to the strings that change some of the sounds. So you'll hear in the higher register, there are some very metallic sort of sounds. The piano has been kind of transformed in some ways into a percussion kind of instrument. And I think that, without saying too much, I guess I'll just say that I think that the sonata itself does encompass all of the facets of this feeling of anticipation, all of the things that that can mean, both in terms of positives and negatives. And um, so I think it captures that, that feeling. Um, the third piece is going to be by Volodymyr Runchak. Um, this is Homo Ludens III. So um, Runchak is a composer and a conductor for three years now, he's been hosting the New Music in Ukraine broadcast on the national radio of Ukraine. Um, he is quite prolific as a conductor as well as a composer. He's conducted all over Europe. Um, and this work was composed as part of a series, the Homo Luden series, that he started actually in um, 1991 and has continued or did continue all the way through 2018. So this is the third of that series, but there are many other works for other instruments. This is the one for cello, but he has a whole series of these. Um, the premiere was not until 2010 in Donetsk by, and was premiered by Zoltan Almashi, who is a cellist, but also a Ukrainian composer. Um, it really is sort of an arsenal of expressive means for the cello, it is sort of new arsenal of expressive means. The cello is very much treated like a percussion instrument and there's very little in terms of lyricism, but rather a lot of kind of brutal and even sort of active nature, which I think often is not necessarily associated with the instrument. Um, the name itself kind of comes from the Latin word for to play. So um, Volodymyr was a little bit with, he, he, he didn't say much to me about what the piece meant, but I think that, um, taking the title and hearing sort of the new ways in which she's experimenting with the instrument is a, is a kind of a commentary on this role of play in our existence and in the context of the time period. And then we're gonna end with a work by Valentin Silvestrov. So this is a little bit earlier actually than the exhibition's time periods and um, Silvestrov is probably the most famous composer from Ukraine today. Um, he studied composition with Boris Toshinsky and counterpoint and harmony with Lovko Ravutsky at the National Conservatory in Kyiv. Um, this postlude comes from a period that he referred to as part of his metaphorical style, um, the second half of which he wrote many postludes. This is actually one of a group of three. Um, and they have kind of an impressionistic sound. He spoke of them as a kind of post history and there has been a lot of commentary that these works are sort of represent a kind of escape from some of the hysteria of the perestroika period um, into a realm of sort of meditation and thinking. It, it sort of represents music as a refuge and I think it's an appropriate way to end because given everything that has happened in the last few days, I think we can all use a musical refuge to recharge and go back out and campaign for Ukraine. So um, our musicians today are fabulous, fabulous contemporary musicians based in New York. On cello, we have Valeria Sholokova. On violin, we have Lauren Cauley and Sabina Torizian. On piano, we have Margarita Rovinskaya. And on 
Viola, we have Carrie Frey. So I will just welcome them now.
Thank you.
thank you so much uh, to the performers for this absolutely wonderful treat that they have just provided us with. Uh, just, uh, just such a powerful reminder of a real uh, in-person concert. I was absolutely blown away by this experience. Uh, I really appreciate uh, Elia Baston help and again thank you for all the performance for performers today uh, for this uh, and uh, uh, this will conclude our virtual translation thank you so much for our guests who joined us by uh, internet and uh, uh, all our in-person guests I uh, invite together in that gallery where I will start a very short exhibition tour thank you Yes, Elena will conduct a tour, and I also would like to pay your attention that this is a, a book that was edited by Olena, and this is the catalog for this exhibition. Very, very beautifully designed and published production, which uh, you can take a look at the, um, at the reception of the, at the entrance of the lobby. So please join Elena for the tour, and thank you very much for joining us today.